afternoon. Uh, my name is Bhutar. I'm a charge of play therapist here at St. Joe's Mercy Hospital. Uh, I've had a lot of questions about uh, bilevel and APRV. Uh, so today I'm going to go ahead and just do a little uh, introduction and uh, initial setup for bilevel and moving on to APRV. Um, so the first thing you want to know is um, how to set it. A um, couple things. So looking at this vent now, we're on ACVC. Uh, 12, 600, 100%, five a piece. Um, when you get to bi-level APRV, you're gonna be on settings other than this. You might be even on um, pressure control uh, with IE ratio four to one. Uh, so, uh, but we'll start here. Um, the best thing to do is where do you start your high peep uh, and your low peep, your rate and, and FiO2. The thing I do uh, with high peep is I like to do a plateau pressure. If I can, I'll get a plateau pressure and that'll give me a good indication on where to start, plus or minus. I usually go plus or minus two and um, I'll start there. Uh, you can always start lower than this. Uh, sometimes if you can't get a plateau pressure, I go peak plus or minus two. So uh, getting started, what you do is you go to your settings, you go to buy level. Um, by level is a uh, pressure control mode and it is uh, spontaneous. I will, um, so now when setting by level, a couple things you have to understand. The rate is a release rate. All it does is basically lock your total cycle time. So when you manipulate the IE ratio, that cycle time will always be the same. So it's not a respiratory rate that you can just go up and down uh, for CO2. Um, unless they're paralyzed and then that becomes your respiratory rate, but that's another, uh, ish topic on its own. So the rate 10 to 12, uh, your P high is your next thing to set your P high, um, basically start at your plateau plus or minus two or 24. So 24, we'll go 25 to make it easy. Now for P low, P low is not necessary. Um, depending, uh, on buy level, depending on what the IE ratio, I'll, I'll keep five, but it's not necessary once you're in APRV because you're only down in the expiratory phase uh, for a short period of time that it's not even necessary. So our policy here at St. Joe's says um, to lock the E time or the time low. Um, you could do that. My preference is I like to use IE ratio. So when you're on buy level, you're already on buy level greater than four to one on pressure control. So I'll start mine since it's just by level, I'll start mine. Notice how the total cycle time never changes is five seconds. The only thing is. But it depends on the rate. It's right, higher. so if you go a rate of 10, your total cycle time now will be six seconds. Right? So now six seconds. It changes your IE ratio. So we'll keep it at 10, all right? For a total cycle time of six seconds. So this is a rate of 10, P high of 25, P low of five, uh, time high, time low of four to one. So anything greater than that uh, will be the next phase of the discussion would be APRV. Your pressure support, we'll discuss it later. Um, and then FiO2 by that, now you're probably already on 100%, uh, so we'll start there. So being that this is a spontaneous uh, mode, you hit OK. Now this this mode does have a lot of nuisance alarm. Let me unfreeze that for you so you can see the waveform. So the goal of my level is basically to increase mean airway pressure. And I'll pause it a little bit here and show you. So the patient is able to breathe uh, during inspiratory and expiratory phase. Um, and then timed every six seconds with the rate of 10, it releases. So that's what the whole rate is, just the release rate. So let's see if we can freeze that. So the whole goal of bi-level is basically to increase mean airway pressure. So keep the lungs inflated. Um, Notice our mean air pressure was nine on ACVC. We're now at a mean of 23. So 
What if the physician wants to to set the time low? You can. You you can always set the time low. Um, just go continue and then put the time low. So the time low is 1.2 seconds. Um, for a total cycle time of six seconds, your inspiratory time is 4.8. Either way, it doesn't really matter what you choose to uh, to set, whether time time high, time low, or IE. I like IE because then I can have my set IE, and then um, up here I can see what the patient is doing. Excuse me for a second. Respiratory dismeter. Hello, respiratory. All right, sorry, I'm also on duty right now. So, so you can. Uh, the whole point of bi level is to have a very low uh, time low. Um, so, with our description of bi level, you can set a, a P low, uh, P low of five because there's still 1.2 seconds um, in the expiratory phase, and you can see it. So as your IE ratio becomes bigger, um, greater than four to one, let's go seven to one. Seven to one. Now, if you look at it, your still total cycle time is still six seconds. Your um, I time now is 5.2 seconds with only 0.75 uh, of, of time low, which means that the patient won't be able to, let me unlock that for you, won't be in time low that long. Notice how short, and the longer your I time or your IE ratio is, the shorter they'll be there. So the need for P low is not necessary so and you can keep going as long as hemodynamically you're stable um and i've had it as high as 10 to 1 you can go 11 to 1 at this point you really got to watch uh hemodynamically um lungs if they're stiff uh you got to watch out for uh pneumothorax because you're your mean airway pressure should tremendously increase. And we'll, and I'll show you. Looking at this, this is, we start out with 23, your mean airway pressure, nine to one right now. Notice how long. So that's the whole point is try to oxygenate, uh, increase mean airway pressure. At a certain point, you know, you reach the point where you're defeating the purpose. Um, so setting up pressure support. Setting up pressure support. So pressure support. Let's say the physician wants eight of pressure support. Okay. So eight of pressure support. Already we know that on bi level because uh, it's spontaneously breathing and the way the vent is set up, it gives about two to three centimeters. Uh, notice at the top there, when I breathe for the vent, there's already pressure support there. So pressure support is really not necessary. If you really want to add it, then the simple way to add it is this. Take your P high. 25. Okay, you want a pressure support, we'll say 10. Let's say 10. All right, so you want a pressure support at 10 to make the math easy. Uh, 10 plus 25? 35. 35, minus your P low? 30. 30, so you set your pressure support at 30. So your set pressure support is at 30. However, you are only getting 10 of pressure support. Okay, so let's say that you are in APRV and your low peep is at zero. Okay. Then you want 10 of pressure support. So same thing. So it'd be uh, plus the five. So 25 plus the 10 is 35, minus zero is 35. All right. Okay. You good? Yep. Very simple. Weaning is a little uh, challenging. Uh, we can do that some other day. But the basic goal is your rate shouldn't be more than 10 to 12. That's a release rate. Your P high, P low, um, your P high is going to be based on your plateau pressure or go plus or minus to your peak, depending on what your tidal volume is if you're doing lung uh, protective strategies. IE ratio, you're gonna start four to one. Um, 
anyways, for me anyways, I like to start because I'm already at that stage where I want to increase mean airway pressure. So uh, let's start at a four to one, watch your blood pressure, watch your mean airway pressure. Um, pressure support, you can add pressure support later on, it's not necessary, um, but the goal of pressure support, it's above your high peep. So take whatever pressure support that the doctor wants, add it to your high peep, and then subtract your low peep, and that should be your set pressure support. Could you walk us through setting up IE ratio, four to one? So setting up IE ratio. Um, basically, it's still a total cycle time of six. So now I can just this is a four to one, i.e. Um, with low peep. At this point, if you want to add low peep, you can. It's not necessary, depending on how fast the patient's breathing. Uh, watch your tidal volumes. Um, you might have to go down on your P high uh, if you're doing lung protective strategies. Um, At what point do you feel comfortable to go to a conventional mode, volume control? Uh, so you can actually go to CPAP from bi-level APRV. We do weaning a, a, a you know drop and stretch, drop and stretch. However, at any point you can you can switch to. Um, to conventional. The big thing is you watch your mean airway pressure. You got to make sure that your FiO2, our policy here at St. Joe's, I think is 50%. Uh, once we get to 50%, then basically you can um, start, you can change them. Um, the goal is to wean your FiO2 and then start weaning your P high. Um, I would actually go leave my P high, FiO2, do my IE ratio, try to get it to more normal, um, and then work on your P high, and then uh, go to conventional. Or you could just drop the rate by two, and drop the s stretch by two. You'll notice that the, the IE ratio will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So the more I drop, the more I stretch, 12 seconds yeah so now we're at uh a four to one but our total cycle time is now 7.5 so and our inspiratory time is is uh six so as you you drop it i'll show you again we'll go to six you see now we're eight to two um total cycle time is 10 seconds so eight seconds uh, until it gets into a CPAP and then you can wean. All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, it was uh, informative. Uh, just play around with it. Don't be afraid. Uh, don't get uh, distracted by the pressure support. It's really simple math. And uh, just start somewhere and then based on your guesses, wean up or down.